Hey guys, today I'm here to wrap up what I read in the month of April and partially thanks to the Dewey's 24 hour readathon, I did pretty well last month and I have six things here that I completed to share with you guys. So jumping right in, I'm going to touch on the Dewey's reads briefly and you can check my wrap up for the readathon if you want more in depth thoughts. But the first thing I picked up was Saga Volume 1 by Brian K. Vaughan and Fiona Staples. This is a pretty popular comic um, series that centers around this interspecies couple of Alana and Marco who are on the run from the authorities who want to get their hands on this mixed species baby. I really liked the concept of this series and um, I thought that the universe was really quirky and I'm interested to see where it goes in subsequent volumes but I didn't really enjoy the writing so much. I felt like a lot of the dialogue was really forced and um, Alana's character in particular, I felt that she was supposed to be read as this kind of kick-ass, badass female character who was really snarky, um, but quite frankly, a lot of her dialogue just felt really forced. So I wasn't as huge a fan of this as I thought I would be. I ended up giving it three stars and I will definitely continue on with the series, but um, yeah, I was kind of hoping to be a little bit more blown away by this. I also completed another graphic novel during the readathon and that was Killing and Dying by Adrian Tomine. This is more appropriately, I guess, a collection of short stories in graphic novel format. Um, um, and I'm a huge fan of his art style. Like, that will never change. I like that it's really simple, that the colors are muted, that he uses gray tones beautifully, and yet when he does full color spreads, um, they're really gorgeous. Looking at each one of these stories individually, I thought that they all depict life suckery in very distinct ways. I thought that they all really evoked emotion in me, which um, is something I find that Tomine is really good at but just as a collection, it didn't really feel cohesive enough for me, so I ended up giving this one a three stars as well. Then my last full read for the readathon was The Strange Library by Haruki Murakami. This is a short story novella something or other um, about a boy who goes back to the library to return some books and to find some more books and somehow gets taken down to this kind of creepy dungeon area within the library where he is then trapped by a very sinister figure who wants to um, eat his brain after he has read books and absorbed all of their knowledge. Now that sounds pretty cool, right? Like I thought that was a very intriguing concept. I love Murakami's writing so I thought he created this really interesting really kind of sinister little world under the library but this was just too short and there wasn't enough time to explore that and the other themes he was bringing up so again gave this one three stars. Then for a novel that I completed in April I read The Yoga of Max's Discontent, a novel by Karan Bajaj and I literally just put up a review of this and it just came out in the United States on May the 3rd so if you're interested in spiritual journey, spiritual enlightenment stories this might be one to consider picking up. This is a story of a man named Max who is probably in his late 20s um, who seemingly is successful. He works at a good firm, he lives in a good part of New York City, he has has enough saved up to travel occasionally and then when his mom dies he finds himself kind of feeling empty and like he doesn't understand what it was all for. So he packs everything up, gives away his money, and heads off to India in search of a yogi to teach him spiritual enlightenment. Now I was intrigued by the concept of this especially because it was spiritual enlightenment through the practice of yoga and meditation and I really liked the physical descriptions or the, the descriptions of the physical space. Um, the author was actually born in the Indian Himalayas and studied yoga in the south of India so he um, was really able to to create vivid descriptions of the kind of harsh conditions that Max was traveling to. However, for about three quarters of the novel I found Max incredibly irritating to read about so because of that I knocked this down to three and a half stars. Then moving on to a four star read I picked up The Vegetarian by Han Kang or Han Kong. I'm not really sure. Somebody uh, corrected me in my review video so apologies if I got both of those wrong. This has definitely made the rounds here on booktube and it was most recently um, featured on the long list for the Man Booker International Prize. I don't think it made the shortlist but it was on the long list. This is basically a story about a woman named Yang He who has been the most perfectly average woman her entire life. She was a good daughter, a good wife, until one day she wakes up from a violent dream and decides to swear off all animal products all together. This seemingly simple decision throws Yang He's life into chaos. Her family reacts badly, her husband reacts badly, and her sister is left wondering whether she would have had the courage to go so 
so far outside the mold of what is expected of these Korean women. This is definitely one of the most beautiful books I have read all year and I really thought that the writing kind of ticked all the boxes that I look for in good literary fiction. It was beautiful, it was um, kind of subdued, and yet the imagery was really vivid and really really well done. There are so many passages in here that I have dog-eared and I definitely will need to go back and reread this because although it is a very short novel I don't think I got everything out of here that um, the author packed into it uh, but I would just highly recommend it if you're fans of beautiful lyrical uh, literary fiction or maybe if you're a fan of Haruki Murakami there was this kind of vague surreal sense that vaguely reminded me of his writing so yeah, definitely a four star read, definitely one of the best things I've read all year. And then lastly, I finally completed Teach Us To Outgrow Our Badness by Kenzaburo Oye. This is a collection of four short novels or novellas, and I don't think enjoyed is really the right word for this kind of creepy, grotesque little collection, but this was definitely, definitely a four star read. I don't know a whole lot about Kenzaburo Oye um, aside from what I read in the introduction to this book and what I read on his Wikipedia page, but from what I understand he's kind of um, the leader of this generation of male Japanese writers that were really disillusioned in the aftermath of World War II, and I think that really comes across in these short stories or novellas here. The collection opens with its longest work which is entitled The Day He Himself Shall Wipe My Tears Away and this is honestly the reason that this collection took me so long. This work is told from the perspective of a man who believes he is dying of liver cancer even though he has no cancer that the doctors can detect but he lays all day in his bed he wears these weird cellophane goggles that he won't take off and he basically narrates his version of his life story to a person he calls the acting executor of his will now this is quite possibly the most difficult and weirdest um, structured piece of fiction I have ever read in my life. Props to the translator. This is translated by uh, John Nathan. That story is super weird. It's told in brackets within parentheses with some uh, quotation marks in weird places and no co quotation marks in other places and it was just very very difficult to get through. The rest of the collection is equally weird and grotesque though not quite as structurally difficult. Um, another one of the stories or the title story is Teach Us To Our Grow Our Madness which is about a man who has a mentally retarded son um, with whom he has some weird connection probably because of his relationship with his own father who ended up committing suicide after secluding himself for years. Another story in here is called Agui the Sky Monster in which a young man gets his first job as basically the companion to this brilliant uh, young composer who has suffered some kind of mental break and believes that he sees this baby floating behind him in the sky. And my favorite story in this collection, if I could say that, is called Prize Stock and some people from what I have read um, kind of consider this Oye's take on Mark Twain's Huckleberry Finn. Prize Stock is about a young boy who's probably 12 or 14 growing up in kind of a backwoods Japanese village during World War II and uh, what happens when his village takes a black American pilot hostage after he crash lands near their village. Now this is a very grotesque story and it really shows what war does to young children, even way in the backwoods where maybe they're not seeing action on the front lines, where it's not really changed a whole lot about their daily life. Um, it just, it really was kind of horrifying, kind of beautiful, and I just, I mean, it made a really big impression and that story alone deserved the four stars. So that is what I actually completed in the month of April and then I just wanted to throw A Drifting Life by Yoshihiro Tatsumi in here even though I'm still in the middle of it um, because I have to return this to the library in a couple of days and I won't have it around for my May wrap up. I mentioned this in several videos during April but this is basically a manga memoir of uh, Yoshihiro Tatsumi who is a manga artist obviously um, but he tells it through the eyes of a semi-fictionalized character named Hiroshi. This is definitely not an action-packed manga. You really just stick with Hiroshi as he tries to develop his style and as he feels this frustration that he wants to create a new form and to break out of the mold 
that manga is in in this uh, time period um, but he's not really sure how to do this and it's basically like an artist's odyssey. So if you're interested in artist memoirs or you are interested in manga as an art form or cultural phenomenon definitely check this out but if you're not um, I don't know if this would really appeal to you. I would also recommend this if you're interested in the development of Japanese popular culture because although this definitely focuses on Hiroshi as he strives to develop his manga and obsess over storytelling. Um, this also kind of inserts little pieces of historical information about how media and storytelling changed um, starting in post-war Japan. So that is what I managed to read in the month of April and I'm really happy with what I read. Um, most of it I really enjoyed and even if I didn't love it, um, it was still pretty good. So I think I can count this as a pretty successful reading month. If you guys have read any of the books that I mentioned and would like to share your thoughts on them with me down in the comments, please do so. Or if you want to share with me how your reading month went, I always appreciate that. But for me, that's all I have today. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you are having a fantastic day and I will see you next time. Bye.